Today we'll be taking a look at a new pair of AR glasses called the Enmo Air AR Smart Glasses. These glasses have a built-in battery, camera, runs Android 10 Go, and has onboard Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and much more. I'm John, and welcome to Wagner's Tech Talk. These glasses were sent to me for the purpose of review by Enmo. I was hoping to use them on a recent cruise with my wife, but unfortunately they showed up after we had already left. The presentation of the product packaging itself was very nice. The official product name from the box is the Enmo Air AR Smart Glasses. Let's get into the package and see what these glasses have to offer. First off, the application to connect and control the glasses is not available on the Google Play or Apple Store. You'll have to download and install it. I was told it will be available in six months through those stores when their new product is released. It's a bit concerning and something I wanted to make you aware of up front. While on the topic of the phone application, let's take a brief look at the installation under Android. You'll select the application, the download button, and select download. Go to Settings in Chrome and enable Installing from Unknown Apps, then tap Install. Once installed, tap Open, agree to the privacy policy, and make sure the glasses are powered on, and select One Click Add. Authorize the app, select Allow, and then Pair. Once paired, you'll see the battery level in the upper right. You can adjust the volume level and brightness levels here, or on the glasses directly. There are additional features such as casting, navigation, and others that we'll discuss in just a moment. I'll leave a link in the video description below for the manual if you'd like to check it out. In the printed version, the English section is towards the middle. There is some helpful information here, such as some of the features. I'll augment some of this with my own observations. Those features are, they weigh 76 grams. The CPU is a quad-core ARM Cortex-A53 at 1.4 GHz. It has 2 GB of RAM, 32 GB of storage. The internal display is a 640x480p projected image. The Wi-Fi is 2.4 GHz with BGNN. It has a built-in 350 mAh battery that they claim will operate for 4.5 hours and up to 55 hours standby. It has Bluetooth 4.2. The camera is a 5 megapixel camera with 640x480 stills and 720p video at varying frame rates. It has a 3-axis accelerometer, gyroscope, and magnetometer. There are two physical buttons and a slider for navigating applications and selections. It has a USB-C connection with no DP support. That is, you can't use these with a computer or Steam Deck. It's for charging only. It has one mic, two speakers. The OS is running Android 10.0 Go. As a side note, the current price for these glasses is around $600. So if you're interested in these, please watch the entire video so you know exactly what you're paying for. It may or may not be worth the higher price. Now that we know the specs, let's continue. This card was included for writing down support information, but it's only in Chinese. There are three small boxes with some additional accessories, such as... In box number one, a cleaning cloth with the words etched, you are what you see. Okay. In box number two, you have a short USB-A to USB Type-C cable for charging the glasses. In box number three, there is an additional set of nose pads, plastic frames, and a set of clear lenses. I know they appear blue, but that's just the protective covering. After you remove them, they are clear in case you plan to wear these more frequently indoors. Now for the more exciting aspect, let's take a look at the glasses themselves. From the front, they look like a fairly typical pair of glasses. When you extend the temples, they extend on the sides a little bit further, so they will fit larger heads. Enmo does offer myopia lenses ranging from 0 to 500 degrees. See the manual below for more details if you need them. I only use reading glasses myself, and they seemed okay with some light blurring at times. Speaking of lenses, only the right lens projects any images. I found this a little awkward initially, as I was expecting to see the image projected to both lenses. 
However, my brain adjusted okay, but keep in mind there is no chance of SBS or side-by-side -side support in any future applications with only a single projected image. Nothing is going to jump out at you in 3D. As mentioned previously, the camera is 5 megapixels, and if you double tap the back button, it can snap a photo, albeit at 640x480p, 480 and a small flash that is emitted. As an example of what the images from the camera look like, here's my son when he first saw the glasses, and another moments after I explained what I was showing him. The nose pads are made of flexible metal and are adjustable with plastic edges to protect your nose. The speakers are located at the back of the glasses on both sides at this location. The audio quality is okay, but it doesn't get as loud as I would prefer. The glasses have a USB-C connector for charging, or you can use them to connect to a PC for data transfer to the internal 32 gigabytes of storage. Let's take a quick look. Once you power on the glasses and connect the USB-C cable to the glasses in the opposite end to your PC, you can then access the folders on the glasses themselves. This is useful if you want to be able to copy over some of your own media files, such as your favorite music. Any pictures or video you take will appear in the camera v2 folder. We'll talk more about this in a moment. One thing I like to do when reviewing AR glasses is to show you some actual footage. To do that, I designed a small 3D printed adapter to fit this small, rather low quality camera. Unfortunately, I'm not able to see the background once attached with only one projected image, so most of what I'll demonstrate is the interface in the glasses against a dark background with the brightness set to its lowest level. But it will give you a good idea of what to expect. Now let's take a look at the basic operation and user interface. The operation is easy. You have a slider to scroll through the options. You can single tap to select one and a single physical button to go back. In some applications, you can move your head to operate as a mouse pointer with a single tap to select the option. What you're seeing here is the actual projected image from the small mounted camera I mentioned earlier. The image does look better while wearing the glasses, and this is at the lowest brightness level setting. I'll select album by tapping on the sensor on the side. This will show you all the pictures and video clips that you've taken from the glasses. You just move your finger along the sensor to scroll through the media. Now we'll switch over to the camera app, and here you'll see a preview projected on the lens. Tapping on the side will start or stop the recording. This is actual untouched footage from the camera outdoors. I did bring the volume down as it was a bit windy. The video was captured at 1280 by 720p, which is the max it can do. The frames per second were low at 27.58 FPS. I certainly didn't have great lighting while recording indoors. What I found interesting is that the FPS here was far lower at only 9.97 FPS, and it's very noticeable in the resulting video. I'm not sure why lighting would impact the recording speed, but an observation worth mentioning. Using the mirror application will allow you to cast content from your phone, although it requires using a third-party application called Tubio to work. But I was able to cast content from the phone to the glasses, so that was pretty interesting. The video shown here was from YouTube and my previously released video at the present time on using Bodocera with the Steam Deck. The Enmo application on the phone can also cast directions to the glasses. However, I wouldn't recommend doing so while driving. Additionally, I didn't see an option for changing the units of measurement, so it wasn't very helpful in my opinion. Hopefully that can be improved in a future firmware update. There is an application for setting reminders. You add them by using your voice, and that was nice to have. There is also a limited app store included with some applications that you can download. Keep in mind there is no access to the Google Play Store, just a small collection of about seven applications that Enmo has made available, including music videos, Enmo Translate, Metro Beat, Candy Crush Saga, a music player, and one other game. There is an application for documentation where you can copy a text file into a folder and use it like a teleprompter. The notification application is for receiving notifications from your phone. In settings, there are a lot of options including connecting to a Wi-Fi network, Bluetooth, adjusting sound and brightness levels, 
Laboratory is a bit misleading. That's where you'll set up options to receive calls from your phone on the display in the glasses. I did test this out with my wife and it seemed to work well. You can turn on and off your location. The timeout option is how long you're navigating the menus before the display turns off. Desktop allows you to remove any installed applications and About is used to check for any firmware updates. You can also switch the language to English, Chinese, or Japanese. There are no other languages currently supported. Reset will of course reset back to the factory settings. Now we'll check out some of the extra applications we downloaded earlier. The Music Videos application will allow you to view and listen to music videos. It is rather limited. You can only browse the list, and the small cursor in the middle of the screen is controlled by your head movement. I muted the audio here primarily because the mic in my camera had a lot of crackling noise. It wasn't due to the glasses, however. As far as the Enmo Translate application, I see a lot of potential for being a very useful app. It allows translating English to English, which would be helpful for the hearing impaired. It can also translate Chinese and Japanese to English. It would be great if it included other languages, such as Spanish and French. This is an app I definitely had to try out, so I loaded up Google Translate on my phone and had it speak a phrase in Chinese and see how it translates. And here's that one MP3 song that I copied over earlier to test in the music player. The last app we'll take a look at is Candy Crush Saga. This uses the head movement to control the cursor in the middle of the screen. You press and hold the side while moving your head to move the pieces. Not exactly a practical way to play, but it was fun to try it out. That brings us to the end of another video. I hope you enjoyed this look at the Enmo Air AR Smart Glasses. At this point, I've shown much of what I know about them. They have some interesting features and capabilities and fall short in some areas as we've discussed. I'll place links to the manual and Amazon in the description below if you want to learn more. If there are any questions that you have that I've missed, comment below and I'll try and get an answer. One thing that few people know at this point is that in about six months from when this video was released, an upgraded model, the Enmo Air 2, will be released. Feel free to pause the slides if interested in reading some of the details here. There will also be another product called the Enmo X Lite. Both of these products look interesting. Hopefully we'll be able to check them out on the channel at some future time. For now, I want to thank you for watching. If you enjoyed or found this video helpful, I appreciate any support by liking and sharing this video. It really helps out the channel and it's always appreciated. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel and enjoyed what you saw, I hope you'll join us. Have an awesome day and I look forward to talking with you again very soon.